Keep taking shots. Yes, Joe, yes. Go on, keep going. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of Bike Radar Diaries, which is all about what we like to get up to here at Bike Radar. In our last episode, we asked you, our beloved audience, to vote on which winter bike out of Joe and I's was your favourite, with the loser having to agree to a forfeit. Well, you cruel lot voted for Joe, which means I have lost the challenge and I have to agree to whatever forfeit Joe had in store for me. Yes, it was up to me to decide the forfeit, but before we'd even finished the last video, I already knew exactly what I wanted Jack to do. Come on, that's it! I've been ridden with young Jack over the last few years and already knowing what his attitude to structure training would be, I guess you'd call it maximum recovery training. I thought it was about time to see what he was really made of, what athletic skills hide beneath this soft exterior. Serendipitously, around this time we had an email from the University of Bath asking if we were to come along to use their testing facilities. Obviously, we jumped at this chance and as Jack had to serve his forfeit, he would be coming along with me to be tested in probably one of the most painful ways possible. I hate you, Joe. Yes, it's true. We went and did a test. We've got some fascinating data which you're going to learn about shortly and from that, all-round legend and good friend of Bike Radar, Tom Bell, has set me a training plan which I'm going to be following for the next six weeks or so. Yes, it's going to be how fast can we make Jack? Great effort. Good, 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 good. As I've already said, I'm going to be following this plan for roughly the next six weeks and following those six weeks we're going to go back to the University of Bath to be retested to hopefully see that I've had some drastic improvement and we'll find out that I'm a, a budding pro in waiting. Not to miss out on the gurning fun, I was also tested at the University of Bath and I also will be following a training plan set by Tom Bell over the next six weeks. But I also will need to keep an eye on Jack to make sure he does all the training that Tom sets him. <laughs> I promise I'll do it, Tom. Yes, Joe. Yes. As I am totally new to structured training, I'm going to be following a relatively light five to six hours a week training plan. This is realistic given my commitments and my general attitude towards commitments in general. <laughs> Whereas for me, I've done years of structured training, so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more. I'm going for around 10 hours of training per week. The real interest is gonna come in seeing who sees the biggest kind of percentage increase in the performance. But enough of the chat, let's get into how we got on during our first round of testing at the University of Bath, which included a VO2 max test, a lactate threshold test, which would determine our training zones, and unfortunately, a body fat composition test with some weird calipers. So prepare yourself for a lot of gurning, semi-nudity and a whirlwind of an episode. <laughs> the testing was conducted by Jonathan Robinson, who is the lead exercise physiologist at the University of Bath. Their facilities are available for anyone to come and use and there's more information on that in the video description. The first part of the test was a body composition or body fat measurement test. Following this, we jumped on the exercise bike where we'd undergo a ramp test, which we knew would be incredibly unpleasant. How ramp tests are carried out can differ, but ours would involve starting at around 175 watts with the wattage increasing by 25 watts every three minutes. The goal is to keep going with these increases until you can go on no longer. At the end of each three minute ramp, Jonathan measured our lactate levels through our blood. We also wore a face mask through which we could measure our oxygen consumption and CO2 output, which ultimately gives us our VO2 max or our maximal oxygen consumption. Our heart rate and blood profile was also taken throughout the test, and, as you'll see shortly, we received a report at the end of the test, which you'll find out more about later on in the video. All ready to go? Yes, I've got my most important accessory of all. Fans of uh, Hill Climb Diaries may remember, may remember this, sir. Uh, Sweatband? Sports sweatband. Full athlete mode. As you said, the secret to feeling good is looking good. And you really do. So the first thing Jack's doing is height and weight. There he goes. That's a good number. That's not that bad. 70. That's bad. It's not as bad as I thought. Groot, what did that say? 69.9. What we're hoping to find is that Jack is actually got world-class athletic potential. <laughs> that is what we're hoping to find. That'd be really funny, yeah. You wouldn't want that, would you? Nah, too mainstream for me. About to find out just how soft I am. Just how bad winter's been to me. Or how good. Or how good. 
so that, that is 106 millimetres over the seven sites and that equation gives us 18.6% body fat. That means nothing to me. 18.6% body fat. You in kind of average, and like you said to me, I had a text from you saying how unhealthy you've been in Scotland. I had. So, you know, it looks like within six weeks if we could get a good bit of improvement there. No more halloumi. No. The first bit of blood from Jack. So what's this bit for? So this is kind of resting, post warm up. Um, and so it could be lactate. And then at this stage, I also do Hemoglobin and hematocrit. So and Jack's hemoglobin is 15.4 and hematocrit's 45%. So that's about average, legal. isn't it? An average. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Cool. Oh, I already feel quite claustrophobic. Oh. So this is Jack's breathing going up and down. Nice and calm at the minute. Probably going to be a bit more staccato later. I don't think I need to know this much about yeah. myself. The test felt incredibly easy at first and my blood lactate levels were still fairly low, but around the 12 minute mark when the wattage had increased a few times, things were starting to hurt and my lactate levels rose accordingly. Jack's still smiling, but his heart rate's gone up to 170. It suddenly jumped up quite a bit. Looking good. 191 heart rate, his heart's gone high, he's pushing hard, so he's red dots, there's a lot of lactic there, he's hurting good, he's hurting, good work, good go on good. Jack, go on keep going. The last three minutes of the test were incredibly painful as the workload and my lactate levels increased. My body just couldn't process the amount of oxygen I needed to keep going. At this point I'd hit my VO2 max. Last 10 now, great Last 10, work, go on, work. keep good, digging good, Jack. Good, good, good. Go on. Push it on through. Go on, that's it. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> what a... I hate you, Joe. What a... 199 heart rate. <laughs> Oh, that's high. Yeah, it is high, isn't it? Well done. Well done. Thank you, Joe. I'm very proud of him. I'm going to give you so much abuse. Should do. Once Jack's test was done, it was time for me to face the music. I've done a lot more riding than Jack over the last few months, but I was still pretty apprehensive about how much it was going to hurt. Right, Joe, now the process starts for you. Yep. Let's find out who's taller. I'm 84. Oh, no. You're now officially taller than Am me. Am I? And what are you in hill climb season, Joe? 62. Uh, that was 63.7. Not bad. How much lighter than me? Five. Five, Five kilos. Look at that body. A picture of an athlete. <laughs> Should we take a guess? What do you think your body weight percentage will be? Go on, shoot a number. 10. 10? I don't know. That'd be good. 10. As you can see, it's a bit threadbare. I've been wearing it since 2012. And how many other base layers have you got? Two. All oh, right. Don't tell them that. Seven <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah, that seems about right. Just like Jack, the first three or four three-minute ramps of 25 watts felt easy. My lactate levels remained low but around the 300 watt mark, good, good, good. things really started to bite. Oh, he's climbing. Go on, Drew, still got tons left in you. Fine, fine. <laughs> he is suffering. Good job. A minute on this level if you can. Yeah, a minute on it, come on, Drew, you can go right through. You can go right through. Yes, Joe, yes. Yes, Joe. Yes. <laughs> I got a, I got a selfie with him halfway yeah, through that. Yeah, because it kept going a bit. I don't know. No pieces. So this one again has got the blue is the oxygen consumption, red carbon dioxide production. Starts off lower, converging in the middle, well towards the end, and then the red stripping above obviously working anaerobically and then the blue which is the oxygen is kind of plateauing out so that last four minutes 
roughly. It's virtually the same, so he's finding it harder, but he physically can't get any more oxygen into the body. Um, That's yeah. definitely how it felt. If we look at this <laughs> one, basically how much air he's physically breathing in mm -hmm. and out. So, kind of at rest, it's about 10 litres. Starts off fairly gradual, and then right at the end, it really kicks up up to nearly 200 litres per minute going in and out of his lungs, <laughs> but he can't get any more oxygen out of it. So it's just kind of passing through his lungs and so he's I'm not extracting it. No. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hardest thing you've done in a while? Yeah, for, for a while, yeah, since, since November last year, I think. It's nasty. So as you can see, despite it being a truly torturous experience, we both had a lot of fun during our day at the University of Bath. The team are very professional and it gave us a lot of interesting stuff to think about. Yes, and speaking of data, we have our reports as put together by Jonathan. These are filled with all sorts of thrilling stats, which we're going to go through now before handing over to Tom Bell, who's going to make sense of those numbers for you. Okay, well, you may have heard some of these numbers already in the video, but we're going to go over some of the ones which I think are key. Um, my mass, 63.7 kilos. Height, 184.7 centimetres, which gives me a BMI of 18.67 my kind of LT power output, which is called in here, which is kind of my all-day pace. If I keep myself fueled, it's 200 watts, and that occurs at 163 BPM. Then onto my lactate threshold power output, that is around 300 watts, and that occurs at 185 BPM. That's one we're really keen on trying to improve. And I was, think I did about 197 BPM max. My absolute VO2 peak was 4.108 litres per minute. I don't really know what that means, but it gives me a relative VO2 peak, which is my VO2 max of 64.5. So that's me. Let's hear about Jack. Well, <laughs> my stats are not quite as impressive as Joe's, but I can tell you that my mass, which is lower than I thought, was 69.9 kilos on the day of testing. I was also very disappointed to hear that I am officially shorter than Joe at 180 centimetres. This gives me a BMI of 21.5. My all-day power, as Joe described it, is 175 watts and that occurs at about 152 beats per minute. My lactate threshold power comes in at 238 watts and that occurred at 184 beats per minute. And I think my peak for the day was 198 beats per minute, which makes me one better than Joe. Fantastic. Score one. My absolute VO2 peak, again, don't know what that number means, but that was 3.58 litres per minute on the day, which gives me a VO2 max of 51.3, which is considerably less than Joe, but I think it still put me in one of the better categories, so thumbs up for that one, but definite improvements to, to be made. Okay, so before we dive into what Joe and Jack's training will actually look like, I think it's first important to define what VO2 max and lactate threshold actually mean. So first off then, the lactate threshold, also known as MLSS, or Maximum Lactate Steady State, or the anaerobic threshold, is the point at which the body's production of lactate exceeds its ability to clear it from the blood. So even though we might see a small increase in blood lactate at lower intensities, perhaps from two millimole to three millimole, after the lactate threshold, you're gonna see things go exponential. VO2 max, on the other hand, is essentially a measure of the maximum amount of oxygen that the body can use during high intensity exercise. And this can be expressed as an absolute value or as a relative value taking body weight into account, which might be something like 60 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Looking ahead to what Joe and Jack's training will actually include, there's gonna be quite a few similarities, but also some key differences. With Joe being the more experienced athlete of the two in terms of training history and racing experience, it's likely that he'll be able to handle some of the more complex and advanced workouts compared to Jack who has less experience in this regard. What this does mean however is that it's in Jack that we expect to see the biggest improvements during the training period just because he's got so much scope relative to his potential. This means that in theory he should need less of a training stress to actually move the needle compared to Joe. Whether or not Jack's lower overall training volume will offset this improvement though, remains to be seen. The training programs that both the guys will be using will be periodized to allow for a gradual increase in training stress and volume, but also include enough recovery to allow for those beneficial adaptations. The workouts themselves will obviously be targeted at improving the lactate threshold and VO2 max, 
and that will be done via structured intervals and then there will also be some fitness maintenance workouts as well as some easy rides slash days off for that all important recovery. In later videos we'll look more in depth at some of the more interesting workouts and obviously see how Joe and Jack are getting on with the training. So that concludes our first episode of our How Fast Can We Get mini series and by the time you see this we're hopefully going to be well into our training plans. Once again we want to say a huge thanks to Jonathan and his team at the University of Bath. Despite the bucket loads of pain we actually had a lot of fun and if you want to learn more about their facilities check our link in the video description below. We'll be back relatively soon with an update on how we're getting on with our training so keep an eye on the channel for that and as always if you have any questions leave those in the comments we'll do our absolute best to get back to you and finally do not forget to like and subscribe. Bye!